Are you ready to awaken to a new you? Welcome to Healthy You Radio, the radio network that empowers you to heal you. Keisha, yours is here to share over 25 years of frontline medical experience, bringing you the latest scientific and medical research, tempered with the holistic wisdom of Ayurveda and functional medicine. Also, you can be the best you you can be. And now your host, Keisha Yours. And welcome to Healthy You Radio, everybody. This is Keisha Yours, your wellness coach and advisor for today. And good afternoon, Benny. Hello, Keisha. It's so good to see your smiling Aww, face. Aw, yours too. And shiny pate. My, <laughs> shiny what? <laughs> it's that time of year, you know? It's like guys with beards and bald heads. Oh, oh yeah, right, 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 like, right, 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 right. You know, happy holidays, Benny. Thank you, you know, to you too and, and the family, of course. That's right. And the New Year's coming right up. Yeah, I know, right? New Year's resolutions. Haven't even thought about it. Well, we have something to help you with. Some <gasps> of the kind of keeping 2012 smooth oh, and clean. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. So this is a good show for how to reorganize your life. All maybe, right. Maybe make it a little bit more efficient, a little more streamlined. Oh, I'm all about efficiency. Oh, I know you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. You know me too well. <laughs> My guest today is professional organizer Barbara Reich, who eliminates clutter as a way of life. How's that? Perfect. All right. So Barbara tackles organization with a 360 degree approach, streamlining the home schedules and daily lives of her discerning clients. Mm. Wouldn't you want to be one of those clients? Oh, Do you need your life streamlined? Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I do. No, I don't. So. I, have, I have Lorraine to help me get, oh, keep myself true, on track. Yeah. It's really good. She does a great job. Yes. So Barbara is equal parts affable and type A personality. Barbara's tough love approach yields real results and lasting change. She has a BA in psychology from the University of Pennsylvania and an MBA in management from New York University and she began her career as a management consultant a profession in which she excelled as a result of her efficiency and attention to detail and today she applies the same skills to help her clients rid their homes of excess clutter streamline overbooked days and improve quality of living welcome to healthy radio Barbara thank you thank you I'm glad to be on well we're glad to have you here from Mexico the sunny <laughs> sunny skies and warm beaches right now. That sounds like uh, a really good place to be. And you should see how I organize my hotel room. Oh, <laughs> so the maids don't even have to walk yeah, in. Yeah, right? Huh? <laughs> don't worry about her room. I actually bring pop-up hampers. Wow. Are you serious? Okay. Whites and colors. Okay. <laughs> That's so cool. All right. Well, let's, let's hear how you do vacation, Barbara. <laughs> You don't even want to know about all my packing routines, my travel routines. I take it all to the to the nth level. Well, I do want to hear about it. That's why you're on the show. So, Well, let me tell you. Before I pack, I put out everybody's clothes. I, there's, I have a son. I have a daughter. My husband. Everybody's clothes are put out. Then I pack in each suitcase a quarter of each person's clothes. That way, if one of the suitcases gets lost, nobody's without clothes for the vacation. Mm, that's a good idea. I do carry on for that reason because that actually happened. I went to Peru and uh, I was all set to hike to Machu Picchu and American Airlines lost everything. <laughs> it was so sad. Yeah, you learn pretty quickly. I always <laughs> pay for each member of the family also. I put a bathing suit and a pair of flip-flops in the bag. And then since I pack everything with one pair of metallic wedges, I carry that pair of wedges on with me because those are lost. I would have no nighttime shoes. Oh, well, you are prepared for every eventuality. So, what else do you do? What do you do well, to keep the kids the packing, happy on I'm the also plane? Prepared. I'm sorry, say that again? I said, what do you do to keep the kids happy on the plane? Well, electronics suffice. I have 12-year-old twins, so oh. they don't really bother us much anymore on the plane. But when my kids were babies, I would plan the flight times around when they napped. So that way, as the plane was taking off, you give them a bottle, and they were out cold for most of the flight. Yep. I used to do that, too. I'm taking notes right now here uh, because I had twin boys 11 months ago. So uh, keep oh, talking. I need all these, I need all these tips. Yeah, all the twin you. organizing tips. Yep. Benny's writing them down. I'm writing everything down. <laughs> My pen is ready to roll. <laughs> it's almost been a year. I know. Wow. We'll get to that on the show. <laughs> all right. So... 
This actually is a great topic for people because uh, I think that traveling is a lot different than it used to be. We have, you know, a lot longer times in the airport than we used to have. We're not able to pack our food the way we used to do. Ooh. So what what do you have for tips for people that are serial travelers that travel a lot? I mean, if you're a serial traveler, there's nothing wrong with having a um, all your toiletries in duplicate and having them stay packed. I do and that. also, you just really need to get it down to a routine because a routine works. So mm -hmm. if there's certain chargers that you always need and you're a serial traveler, I would have those packed as well. Yep. And again, when you pack, less is more sometimes. You're better off packing jeans with multiple shirts that you can wear with them, a pair of black pants, things that can be mixed and matched and having less things as opposed to having so many things that your luggage is cumbersome, it's cumbersome to unpack and cumbersome to pack. Yeah. I try to keep it to running shoes and one other pair of shoes that are on my feet, you know, so I have exercise clothes. And then I do have all the duplicate toiletries and electronic cords. And then I have this uniform I wear when I travel. It's just great. There's some designer that does this crinkle material. And you can just put these shirts and I'll crinkle them all up and then I look professional and I'm going to my medical conferences. It's great. So a pair of black pants and all those shirts and I'm good to go. Same jewelry. Exactly. Yeah. It makes it so easy. So I had to learn that the hard way though. <laughs> no, I'm a big fan of having go-to outfits and, and routines just work. And it works from everything from travel even to the the everyday minutia like where you put your cell phone what pocket of your bag you put it in mm. where you charge it it works with kids homework you know the kids homework should really only go from the backpack to the place where they do their homework and back to the backpack and if you do things the same way every time it becomes road and you take a lot of the mystique and a lot of the decision making out of it mm -hmm. and then you can just kind of go on auto autopilot that's a great idea about kids homework great idea each of my kids has a cubby, and so sometimes they'll leave their homework in their cubby, and I should just get rid of the cubby, and then they stick it in the backpack. That's a great idea. So, right, sometimes it's cutting out that middle step. Right, right. So we are moving into 2012, and there's a, a interesting thing around the, the Mayan calendar, you know, where 2012 is supposed to be the end of the world. And the way I interpret that is it's the end of the world as we know it, and things have to change. And so, you know, the things that don't work anymore are kind of receding. We've, we can see that with our economy and a lot of things going on in the world right now. And I think people need to have some kind of routine the way that you're talking about, some kind of structure, because there's so much change happening in the world right now. So what are your tips for, I would say the, that minutia is a very good word for this, in your daily life to kind of keep you so that you can stay grounded so I think you've got some tips for 2012 to stay organized, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So in addition to routines, I also tell people to always start the day doing the thing that you're dreading the most because otherwise it's just hanging over your head the whole day and you're less productive. If you get that thing done first, then it's smooth sailing the rest of the day. Mm, good point. So... If you love to exercise, getting up in the morning and exercising is a lot of fun. But, you know, if you don't like to exercise, this would be a good thing to get it out of the way first thing in the morning. And then you don't have to worry about it all day long, right? Well, I also feel like you can control what time you wake up. So you can make sure you get that workout in if you do it in the morning. But things happen at the end of the day that you can't control. Mm -hmm. And if you're counting on working out at the end of the day, I would say at least 50% of the time it may not happen. I found that to be true in my life. I have to do it first thing in the morning. So what right. are some well, other... That, that is my experience, too. Yeah. And then I guess if you hate paying your bills when you're, when you're nice and sharp in the morning, it'd be a good time to sit down and just get that done, right? Or have a routine. Pay mm -hmm. your bills every Sunday, for example. And you can kind of do it while you're watching your favorite TV show. But if you know that you always pay your bills on Sunday at a particular time, then it gets done. And you don't have to worry about unpaid bills. Mm -hmm. Extend the routine to include when the bills come in the mail. Where do you put the bills? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good so idea. So if you have an inbox or a place for unpaid bills, then you know that no bills are getting lost. And then you don't have piles that you're shifting around to find bills or finding that you didn't pay something that you thought you paid. 
She's been in your house, Benny. I know. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Benny's eyes My eyes shifting are kind of like, oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, give the guy a break. He just had twins. Yeah, I know. Keisha, yeah. I know. <laughs> She's been in my house, too. I should have said it that way. <laughs> Actually, surprisingly enough, my house is fairly well organized. I'm trying to stay on top of it. I don't want to be falling behind. So You are an organized guy. I kind of have to be. I mean, I, I yeah. host a number of shows here along with producing, and so... You know, I have to stay organized. You we, know, we else. actually call Benny Superman yeah. for that reason. So, oh, you do okay. Yeah, yeah. he's really, really. But with organized. twins, you have to be super organized. I, I I fully believe in that, and you know, being dirty and all the being unorganized chaos is uh, my kryptonite. So, yeah, right. yeah. See, mm -hmm. Superman has kryptonite. Uh -huh. So, routine is another one of your tips, right? To kind of keep to that. You've mentioned it several times. So, what are some things that I know? Like my husband loses his keys a lot. So if he had one place that he would put those, that would be one kind of a routine. What are some other things? You mentioned homework. Right. Well, it's, also, it's not just, you know, having a designated place to put something, but it has to be a place where it makes sense and where it's easily accessible. So if your place for his keys meant that he had to walk through the entire house, weaving through hallways to get to the bedroom, to put them on a tray there, that might not work. Mm -hmm. But if you had a tray or a drawer in a, console right when you walked into the house and you said this is where your keys are going to go then that might work for him so it's also coming up with routines that work or i always say with young kids you can have a three-year-old in nursery school that hangs up their coat and backpack in a cubby and people just don't understand why they can't do it at home but the reason why they're not doing it at home is because there's not a hook that they can reach at home mm -hmm. so if you make the environment work in your favor if you have hooks or a place where your children can reach to hang up their things, and you make it a rule that they hang it up, they will hang it up. Mm -hmm. Another routine that I implemented with my twins very young was during the winter when they wore winter jackets, I always told them that the, the gloves go in their pockets and the hat goes in their sleeves. And I would say it over and over again like a mantra. And you know what? They didn't lose their hats and gloves and scarves because they knew where they went. And it also didn't take up room in my coat closet. I didn't have to have a separate bin where we were rifling around to find the gloves and the hats and what matched which coat. It made getting out of the door that much easier. You just grabbed the coat and you went. Mm -hmm. So routines like that, even though it seems like such a little thing, it's not such a little thing. It can streamline your life. You know, they, they don't make the gloves with the string on them anymore. Did you have those? The clips. Yeah. Did you have the clips? I think they do. They make clips. Yeah, yeah. But they, I remember the strings. I remember the string, too. I used to get rope burns sometimes because, you know, if you pull them through, then it would go across your neck. Yeah. And maybe that's Back in the day when you were anymore. sledding. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. When there was real snow, none of this fixed. <laughs> Those are great ideas. And that is actually, I have four children. And I think as a parent, you do learn that the more that you have like that, that makes it just a default mechanism. It's a no-brainer thing. Nobody has to think about this stuff. It makes life so much easier and so much smoother. Because we started out with the bin. You know, well, we've got six people in the family. That gets crazy. So you do have to find a place where everything is together. And I like the pockets and the, the sleeve. That's a great idea. So, um, Barbara, we have to take a quick break. And we'll come back with more tips for how to keep your 2012 decluttered and organized. You're listening to Healthy U Radio. This is Kishi Or Stay tuned. If you are tired of feeling sluggish, overweight, and out of balance, then welcome to the Ideal Protein Weight Loss Method. The Fern Life Center now offers this medically designed protocol that results in fat loss while sparing muscle mass. The Ideal Protein Weight Loss Method is an easy four-phase protocol that helps stabilize the pancreas, hormones, and blood sugar levels while burning fat and maintaining muscle, not to mention an excellent support for cellulite reduction. The best part? We guarantee success. Welcome to your last diet. Call the Fern Life Center now and register for our next free introductory seminar. That's right, free. Call 425 391 
3376 or go to fernlifecenter.com. Mention this ad and qualify for a drawing to receive your first product free. Call 425 391 3376 and find your healthy you. Information provided on the Healthy You radio show is provided for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for the advice provided by your physician or other healthcare professional. You should not use the information from the broadcast of the radio show for diagnosing or treating a health problem, disease, or prescribing any medication or other treatment. It has been said from ancient to modern times that the seat of health begins in the colon. Burn Life Center's colon hydrotherapy is a safe, clean, odor-free method of cleaning up your digestion without the use of drugs or chemicals. Toxicity of the colon can cause severe disease, ranging from simple allergies to major medical problems, including cancer, altered immunity, and even mental health issues that range from brain fog to bipolar disorder. Go to www.fernlifecenter.com today to schedule your colon hydrotherapy appointment and start your journey to clean health today. If you book now, you will receive our signature chakra balancing treatment to go with your colon hydrotherapy session free. This is a $35 value absolutely free if you book today. Go to www.fernlifecenter.com for more information about our unique colon hydrotherapy program. Going against the grain has never been so much fun. Alternative Talk, 1150 AM. And welcome back to Healthy You Radio, everybody. You're listening to radio that empowers you to heal yourself. And if you can't find us Monday through Wednesday at 1 p.m. here at KKNW, right on your dial, 1150 a.m., you can find us live streaming off of the Internet at 1 p.m. Monday through Wednesday off of HealthyYouRadio.com. Or you can go to the archive shows page on HealthyYouRadio.com. And there are two years there of great information from different thinkers and wellness coaches and healers from around the world talking about different aspects of health and wellness which of course have everything to do from your environment to spirituality to physical emotional mental health and today we're talking about that environmental piece and keeping your world clutter free and organized so that you can move through it with a little bit more reaching your self potential take it from the pro we've got her here that's right our guest today is barbara reich who is a professional organizer welcome back to the show barbara thank you so we were talking about, before we went on break, um, some tips that you have to stay organized in 2012. And I know that, you know, New Year's resolutions come up and a lot of times people are kind of resolving that they're going to kick some bad habits from late night snacking to smoking. And so, you know, this year you're talking about some ways to, oh, I guess kind of open up your day so that you have a little bit more time because you're not having to think about the small things, right? Exactly. So we went through, you, you mentioned tackling the tough tasks, so doing what you dread the most first, kind of getting those things out of the way so it's not hanging over your head during the day, sticking to a routine so that you get in the habit of doing things the same way every time, and you mentioned maybe keeping your keys in the same place that works for the person that needs to find them, and then um, with kids, keeping um, hats and gloves in the coat as it's hung up. That's a great idea. So what other tips do you have for staying organized for 2012? Well, one of the most important things, if you have a busy life, a large family, a busy family, is having a master calendar. And it really doesn't matter whether it's electronic, whether it's a big whiteboard on the refrigerator, whether it's a piece of paper, but there needs to be some place where everybody's commitments are written down. Because you really want to avoid those situations where your husband kind of looks at you and says, I didn't realize your parents were coming for the weekend. We have to entertain clients this weekend. Or you're planning your kid's birthday party on the same day as the big soccer playoffs. Or you're just totally caught off guard that there's some big school project that's due and your child needs supplies that you don't have. And if you have one place where everything is recorded, you avoid those, oh, my God, moments of panic. Mm. Those are scary times. <laughs> they are scary times. And everybody, it's happened to everybody. And, mm -hmm. and some people, it happens once and they say, this is never going to happen to me again. And other people just, you know, keep, they're, they're almost running to stay still. So they never take the time to put a system in place, to have a master calendar and 
that's why it keeps happening. We do a, um, I call it the business meeting <clears throat> once a week, uh, usually every Sunday, and then at least quarterly, because I think with every school quarter, things change. The kids start new classes, and so then their routine changes. And we go through and we, we divvy up again how the chores are going to be in the house, um, depending on what the kids' theater schedules and sports schedules are and who's going to be home. And we just kind of go through and do that, and then I make up a color-coded calendar to put on the refrigerator so everyone can see it. And that still changes, you know, because I've got four children, but it, it's it got enough of a baseline routine that it kind of keeps people in the loop about what's happening. And it's very, very helpful. When we don't do that, life is chaos. So it, it is well, very interesting how much it helps. And, and not only that, but I think that um, the, the array of choices that the children have in terms of the activities they pursue can be daunting. And then you add into the mix the fact that they just don't give you the schedule. Mm -hmm. So I know, for example, my son plays travel baseball. And travel baseball practice was always on Friday and, say, Tuesday. And then all of a sudden, after basing all of his other activities on the fact that I was counting on baseball being Tuesday and Friday, they changed baseball to Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And it, it throws you off. So... If you're adding to the mix that you have no idea where anybody is supposed to be at any given time, you just can't even snap back from that. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's very good. So having a master calendar is a very, very good idea. And I think with kids' cell phones anymore, you know, I've got older kids now. And so they, they put things in as we're talking in their cell phone. You know, Reagan's opening night for her play is January 7th. Um, so then my other kids will put that into their cell phone so that they know. And I've got um, one in college, and he knows, you know, we'll, we'll put him in the loop so that he can come up if he can. So it's very good to um, incorporate their way of organizing, too, I think, instead of just having your way, um, a way that they can keep on top of things. Right, and I even find the family meeting that you mentioned, I have clients that do this even with very, very young children, and it's a way of training children to know what what to expect during the week so it's not a surprise when they find out oh mommy's not going to be able to take you to ballet on thursday that a babysitter is taking you instead or that you know we don't have art on you know this day anymore because it ended and i think children really thrive when they know what to expect when it's not just a surprise kind of thrown on them and they're not just being dragged from activity to activity without any input. So the family meetings, I really love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I do too. It's the only thing that helps me to stay afloat. So then you, you talk about, um, oh my gosh, whenever I go running in the morning, I'll stop and I'll open my mailbox. And at this time of year, it's just full of um, mail. And so if I were to take that whole thing into my house, then I would have a lot of mail lying there on the table. So I'll stand at my garbage can and I'll recycle things that I don't even need to open. Just out there in my running clothes, <laughs> I'll go through my mail in, the, in front of the garbages. They recycle and they're, and they're regular. And so then and then I walk in with what I really need. Yeah, you're eliminating a step there. Yeah. No pun intended with your running. Yeah, clothes, exactly. Right? Instead of throwing it in the recycle yeah. bin upstairs and having to carry it back mm -hmm. down. Right. So but, although that's more exercise for you, though, that's sure, true, so. but it's okay. not me that does it. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. so what what I have a question about is um, I know there are certain and I don't know if you know these, Barbara, but there are certain places that you can call. I was thinking about this as I was out the, the other morning doing this, thinking I haven't gotten my name off of all these catalog lists. Um, do you know those those websites and things like that to call to get yourself off of mailing lists for catalogs? I do know, but not in Mexico at this very minute. Um, but I do have them um, to post on my website when I return from vacation, and that website is uh, www.resourcefulconsultants.com. But it's, it's not only getting your name off of the lists and not subscribing to any of the... Um, catalogs, but it's also taking a few minutes on your email to unsubscribe from things. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes in you know in the in the moment you just delete things, which is great. But what's a step better is actually unsubscribing. And even when you're ordering something online, take a minute to uncheck the box that says that you want to receive promotional materials because you really don't. And Keisha, 
what you do is exactly what I tell people to do. And a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people just bring in the mail and it sits in a pile. And then that pile gets joined by another pile the next day. And then it gets moved around because companies coming. And before you know it, you just have stacks and stacks of paper. And 90% of it is just meaningless. It's absolutely meaningless. Um, if you throw away a Pottery Barn catalog, there'll be another one next week. Mm -hmm. And the catalogs are really just encouraging you to buy things that you don't really need. Trust me, if you really need something, you know where to find it. And the other thing is, is it's so um, non-eco-friendly to be throwing those things out. And that's one of the things that really drives me to get myself off of the mailing list for things. You know, it's like, quit sending me all of this paper. It's really, really irresponsible because where does that go after, you know, it does get recycled, but they say, you know, there's only a percentage of things that really does get recycled. So, and it really takes a lot of energy. Oh, it, it to... breaks my heart when I, the amount of paper that I throw away, particularly this time of year. Mm -hmm. Same here. Yeah. And so the email is, not, is a great idea because in the mornings I spend a long time in my work email actually deleting junk from Amazon and from, you know, and, and I have unsubscribed from them. They must have a million different tendrils <laughs> that <laughs> you have to unsubscribe, yeah. unsubscribe from. So I, I go in and I do unsubscribe, but some of them I continue to get. And I know that there's, I've got to keep doing it. So, but what were you going to say, Barbara? Right. Well, another thing that's very helpful is to make a to-do list. Mm -hmm. So I tell people at the end of every work day or the end of every day, just to spend five or 10 minutes reorganizing yourself for the next day. So clearing your desk, putting things away, and making a new list of what needs to be done the next day. And again, whether you write it down on a legal pad, whether you put it in a smartphone, whether you do it on your computer, the fact that you're doing it just lends a little bit of precision to your day and it makes the next day that much more organized because you know going in what you need to accomplish. I'm a post-it note girl. How about you, Benny? How do you do your next uh, day? I'm actually pretty good still with the old noggin. Don't Are need you? to make as many notes. I think it's just because I, I stay ahead of the game. I, I kind of have a process of my head on, like, let's say a particular show that, like yours, whether I run it live or uh, another show on the side. Right. Like, when I produce it up, I have a particular rhythm in my head. Like, okay, I, I record it. Immediately, I go back and try to edit as best I can and then file it away and tell wh whoever needs it. Um, and if I need to load it for the next day, I do it then and there kind of during another show, but mm -hmm. if I don't, then I'm going to forget about it easy because I have to move so far ahead of everybody else in the house. I have to stay ahead of them. Right. So it's just kind of a process. I get used to it. But I, I mean, if again, rhythm and, and uh, repetition, I should say, mm -hmm. is, is key. I have a little, because I've got the clinic, I've got the radio mm -hmm. show, I've got the kids, and I've got my, so my schooling, ding, 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 right? So ding. each has its own color of post-it. Aw, that's, <laughs> so that's how I do mine. Now I know what you need for Christmas. Color coding. That's right. Yeah. I do. I okay, go through okay, them like crazy. Right, okay. Make it happen. Make it happen. <laughs> Note to self. So how do you do that, Barbara? How do you keep yourself, like, there are so many different ways of keeping lists, and um, I know I've heard people say I've lost my external brain, you know. Well, Benny makes a good point. Um, there's a lot to be said for doing things in the moment. So a lot of times just doing it right then and there mm -hmm. takes a lot less time than writing it down or giving it to somebody else to do or explaining it to somebody. So to the extent that there are things that you can just take care of, mm -hmm. just do it. I, I've been working with a client who um, instead of just inputting contacts into her computer, she scans them to send them to somebody else who's an assistant somewhere else who knows the way she likes it to put it in her contacts it's too many steps mm -hmm. yeah that's great at point because um i try not to minimize emails i used to do that and then sometimes like the computer would have to reboot itself or something and so i just answer each email in the yeah. moment as i can mm -hmm. yeah. instead of um kind of creating a backlog you know that's well, that's a big part well, it's of kind it. of keeping a conversation still going right you're not pulling parts out of it and you're like well i can't really quite remember exactly well let me thumb through all the emails and find right. the right one it's should be right in front of you, and then it. Because I have patients that email me, and yeah. so if that gets lost, then they think I'm not replying to them, which is not <gasps> very they, nice. You never lose anything. <laughs> All right, we have to take a quick break, and when we return, we'll talk more with Barbara Reich about organizing your life in 2012, so you can have a great year. Stay tuned.
Are you ready to find balance in your life? Sometimes life can be challenging on all levels, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Visit Fern Life Center and let Keisha Yours, ARNP, an integrative medical specialist, design a detoxification program that fits your unique needs, body type, and lifestyle. One size does not fit all, and detoxing can potentially be harmful if not done properly. Enter Fern Life Center's detoxification and Panchakarma program and come out with a new lease on life. Feeling more energetic, peaceful, and lighter. Call Fern Life Center today and find out what transformation feels like. Call 425-391-3376 and make an appointment with Keisha today. Mention this ad and get a free steam in their unique detoxifying herbalized cedar steamer with any regular massage. Lighten up your body, mind, and spirit. You're worth it. Go to FernLifeCenter.com and sign up for Keisha's free monthly newsletter and you can keep up with the latest health tips, seasonal recipes, words of wisdom, and get your questions. Questions answered in her advice column. Don't just take our word for it. Listen to what others have to say about Fern Life Center's amazing weight loss program. Give yourself the gift of good health this season. Since going on the Fern Life Center Ideal Protein Diet Program, I've been able to go off my cholesterol medication. My total cholesterol is 58 points lower than it was three months ago. And that is after going off Lipitor. My good cholesterol has improved. And my bad cholesterol is down, and my triglycerides are now normal. I've lost 55 pounds, 26 inches in five months. I feel like I have my life back, and I'm free from my food addictions. Woohoo! Thanks, Keisha, and Ideal Protein. Go to FernLifeCenter.com to schedule your first appointment today. That's FernLifeCenter.com. Mention this ad and get a water bottle absolutely free. Are you one of those people who gets the winter blues along with the winter bulge? Well, this year, make a different choice. Get your brain checked. You get your oil checked in your car and you put the right gasoline in at the pump. Aren't you more important than your car? Make an appointment with Keisha and get your neurotransmitter levels checked. Those are the brain chemicals that affect your mood, your food cravings, your sleep patterns, your libido, and motivate you to exercise. A simple blood or urine test will tell you what you need to do to motivate or through the winter months efficiently instead of stalling out. To make an appointment, call 425-391-3376. That's 425-391-3376. Or go to FernLifeCenter.com for more information about our revolutionary neurotransmitter rebalancing program. Feel your best and look fantastic this winter. Call now. The search is over. You found the station that's not afraid to be different. Alternative Talk, 1150 AM. I can get to sleep. I think about the implications of diving into deep. Welcome back to Healthy You Radio, everybody. This is Keisha Ewers, and you're listening to radio that empowers you to heal yourself. And today is to take control of your own life and be organized for 2012. My guest today is Barbara Reich, not Barbara Reich, the way I've been saying it for the last half hour of the show. We accept, yeah, we accept full responsibilities on our end. Uh, wow. It's okay. I always, at the beginning, ask the guests I how know. to pronounce their name, and One today time. I didn't do it, and I said it wrong. That's so right. Barbara Reich is a professional organizer, and she's here with us. Welcome back to the show, Barbara. Thank you. So let's give your website so that people can find you and follow your blog. And I think you have a book coming out soon, don't you? I have a book coming out. Well, it's, it's due to the publisher April 1st. So it'll probably come out in the... Like fall when, of next year. 2013, it'll be out. Okay. I know it takes a while to birth that baby for sure. So it does. What's your website? It's um, www.resourcefulconsultants.com. All right. So you have different tips on there, and you um, help people streamline their lives, get organized. And we were talking before we left on some of the tips that you have for keeping organized in 2012, like tackling the things you hate the most first, your tough tasks, sticking to a routine, kind of fighting the onslaught of paper, and then being prepared by um, being ready for your next day, doing a little task list to get you ready and kind of summing up what you have to do for the next day. So there are some things that I know will bog people down, and one of mine is email. I have a lot of email from patients and from um, different, I'm in school and a doctoral program, and then I've got my kids' email, their schools, things like that. 
So how do you stay organized with email? That's a big one. Well, one of the things that I find people do is they save emails because they think it's going to provide a visual cue or a visual reminder to them when they see it to, to remind them to do something. But what happens is those same people tend to send to save so many emails that, you know, any visual cue that it might be providing is totally lost when it's, you know, when you have pages and pages of emails. So what I tell people is at the end of every day, there should actually be a white space at the bottom of your email page. So you should have taken care of everything. You can either print something out and put it in a paper file. You can have electronic files or you can delete it. But you just need to address it. There's no, just like I tell people to touch each piece of paper once, you should touch each email once. So open the email, respond to it, decide whether it needs to be filed electronically in a paper file, and move on. And the other thing is, if you're working on a particular project or there's something that you consistently need as a file category, make that category so that you have places to pull those emails. Mm. I actually, that's how I stay organized in my life. My email becomes my file system because I keep folders over on the side with Outlook and just file everything away if I need it later. It's under a category that I can go find it. And I am really good about hitting delete. Um, I love that little X. It feels good. It's sort of like in the old days of checking off a, t a task on a list. I used to keep big lists. Now I just kind of hit delete and it's done. <laughs> feels good. It's the best. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, sometimes I get into trouble with that, though. I'll have to email somebody and say, um, I've deleted that. Can you remind me again? Because I didn't file it properly. But, you know, that's very rare. And you always can go back to the person. So how does someone yeah. who's not organized become organized? Because I don't know if you're familiar with um, Ayurvedic medicine is one of the things that I do in my integrated medical practice. And Ayurveda actually sees different body types. So it means that we're not all the same. We don't think the same, where our bodies aren't the same, and we don't see our world in the same way. And one of the body types is super organized. The different body types are Vata, Pitta, and Kapha. These are Sanskrit words. And, and the Pitta person, which is what I am and you are, and Benny is, and we've all talked about our organization, you know, strategies, but there are some people like Vata people that are super, super disorganized. They're, they're kind of airy, um, they're very, very creative types, and they have a hard time keeping a routine and staying grounded. What are your tips for those kinds of people? I mean, those people really can't expect to do a 360-degree change. They can modify one or two things, and then once they see that those two things are working for them, then maybe they can add another thing. But it really starts by just changing one thing. So just maybe creating one folder in Outlook, say. So maybe you do a lot of online shopping. So have a folder on the left for online shopping. And whenever you get a confirmation or a receipt, you drag it into that online shopping folder. And then periodically you can delete everything in that folder once you see that you've received everything, you've returned things. But just have one little thing and let that let that be your starting point. You know, don't, if, if you're not a super organized person, don't, try and do it all overnight. I mean, I know I don't enjoy drinking water. It's something that I've never liked drinking water. I know drinking water is good for me. I know I should drink more water. And somebody said to me once, don't go from drinking nothing to trying to drink eight, eight ounce glasses a day. Try for two. Mm, that's good. So don't be unrealistic and then beat yourself up for not being able to do it. Mm -hmm. Or even start with something like organizing your underwear drawer. You know, organizing your underwear drawer is something that can take literally 10 minutes and you feel so good afterwards because no one's emotionally attached to their underpinnings. Mm -hmm. All right. Good tips for your water drinking. Um, this is what I tell my clients that don't drink enough water. Um, you know, they have these beautiful glass. Um, I don't even know what you would call it. It's not a carafe, but it has a little spout on it. When you go into a hotel, they'll have like the water with the different fruit floating in it. And oh, yeah, it looks beautiful. Yeah, a decanter like that. And you can get right. those on like overstock.com and amazon.com, you know, and, and for not very much. And if you put that in your house and you fill it with water in the morning and you put, you have fun kind of putting together some basil and some blueberries or basil and strawberries or mint and strawberries or a little slice of watermelon or some oranges and cucumbers, 
Actually, that makes your water so delicious and so much more fun to drink because you've just put something in there that took a little bit of creativity and it's more exciting and, and it has a taste of something to it and it's still really healthy. So that might be an idea for you for drinking more water. Make it fun. That's a great tip. Thank you. You're welcome. So we're going to talk about some time wasters and then take a quick break. So what are time wasters people do? Well, a lot of times people just spend a lot of time looking for things. And mm. that's just not a good use of time. So if you have a designated place in your house for everything, whether you're talking about pens, whether you're talking about black sweaters, whether you're talking about batteries or computer paper, as long as there's one designated place and everybody knows what that place is and everybody knows that they have to put things back when they take things, then not only you, but your whole household will spend less time looking for things. Good tip. Good tip. I think television is a time waster, too. Make sure your day is done if you're going to sit down in front of the television <laughs> or find something to Keisha. do while Amen. you're doing it. Everyone has DVR and all that stuff these days. Tape the shows. <laughs> you know, don't waste your time trying to catch it when it can. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people ask me, how do I get so much done? And I say, I don't watch TV. I Same mean, here. I watch Glee with my daughter. Well, that's kind We're of... Gleeks. You were gleeks. <laughs> that's funny. I like that. <laughs> and that's, you know, it's Tuesday night. It's our date night. Yeah. We, we have our little our little routine that we do. We slice up apples and we have peanut butter and we watch Glee. That's our little thing. But that's good, though. You've carved out the time specifically right. for that event. That's right. So that's staying organized. And it's an event, boy. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, not, I think probably sitting in front of something, having yourself passively entertained is also a big time waster if yeah. you haven't. And you can fold laundry while you're doing it. Really? You can do, right? Okay. So what do you see? a lot of things you can do. Yeah. You know, multitask. I mean, I used to hate emptying the dishwasher. Emptying the dishwasher takes all three minutes. Mm -hmm. And it's something you can do while you're talking on the phone or watching TV or talking to your child. And how can you hate something that only takes three minutes once you know that it only takes three minutes? True. That's very, very true. Um, doing the dishes used to be that thing for me, too. So if I have someone in the kitchen with me to talk with me, then I'm good to go. But well, before you know, you blink and it's over. Yeah, yeah, I know. And if you spend so much time worrying about the thing yeah. you don't like to do, you waste all that time. And you just do it, which I think Nike was brilliant with her. <sighs> Tagline, right? Should have bought stock. I know. Love it. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> All right. All right. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more organization tips from Barbara Reich. Thinking about doing a cleanse? Why not do it all the way and detox your body, spirit, and mind? Here's what people are saying about Fern Life Center's Ayurvedic Full Body Detox Program called Pancha Karma. My journey with Keisha and Fern Life Center began in February 2008. Upon my initial consultation, my heart and spirit knew Keisha would be the compassionate healer and medical provider I had looked for all of my adult life. My now husband and I went through the Ayurvedic Pancha Karma Detox Program and continued to meet with Keisha to focus on our individual growth and healing. I was able to begin peeling back the layers of blockage I had placed in my life decades ago, like the layers of an onion. Not only did I lose 10 pounds and clear up my skin and digestive issues, but this program was a catalyst that created a sense of freedom in my life that I honestly had not thought was possible to achieve. Start your journey to health and call Fern Life Center at 424-391-3376 today for a consultation with Keisha. Start your cleanse today. For more information and to book an appointment, visit FernLiveCenter.com. That's FernLiveCenter.com. Mention this ad and get one of your detox supplements free. Not valid with other offers. If you're suffering with sinus congestion, fatigue, itchy eyes, eczema, acne, or any of the host of symptoms of allergies like hay fever, food allergies, even allergies to animals, you need NAET. NAET is a protocol that actually eliminates your allergies forever. Throw away the antihistamines, stop yearly allergy shots, and enjoy having your family pet in the house. To begin your journey to an allergy-free life, call Fern Life Center at 425-391-3376 or visit FernLifeCenter.com. Your consultation with Keisha Ewers, ARNP, is covered by most insurance plans. Call now and start to enjoy the outdoors. 
Mention this ad and receive your program guidebook free. This is a $20 value. Call or visit Fern Life Center and make your appointment today. 425-391-3376. Meditation heals and vitalizes both mind and body. Learn this wonderful art with world-renowned meditation instructor Ajayan Boris in the Effortless Mind Meditation Classes. The Effortless Mind Meditation Classes offer a direct experience of exceptionally deep meditation, accessible to anyone. Call the Fern Life Center today, 425-391-FERN. The Effortless Mind, so easy, anyone can do it. Ajayan's next Effortless Mind Meditation class will be held January 7th, 2012 at the Fern Life Center in Issaquah. For more details, see ajayan.com. No other station brings you this much variety. Welcome to Alternative Talk, 1150 AM. Welcome back to Healthy You Radio, everybody. This is Keisha Yours. You're listening to radio that empowers you to heal yourself. And joining me today is Barbara Reese, who is our professional organizer, getting us organized for 2012. Welcome back to the show, Barbara. Thank you, Keisha. So before we head into the last segment of our show with a very important subject called food, get, why don't you give your website again so that people know how to reach you? Sure. It's www.resourcefulconsultants.com. All right. So... One of the things that in my clinical practice at the clinic is I'm always handing people a dietary change. Um, people come to see me with all kinds of illnesses, weight problems, inflammation, and you know, it is about the fuel that you put in your body, just like the gas you put in your car, and you're not going to run as efficiently if you're not eating the foods that are right for your particular body, and every body is different. And this is really hard for people because when I say, okay, you know, I need you to cut out this food and they open up their pantry and that's the food that's sitting in front of them, how likely are they going to be able to continue, you know, on a dietary program? So one of the things that I find is the biggest obstacle for my patient population is organizing food for themselves. And I don't think even if you haven't gotten this from a nutritionist or a medical provider, just Planning your menus is important so that you know what you're going to be eating from day to day and what to buy in a grocery store. So what do you say to people about this? Well, I can talk about this because it's near and dear to my heart. I just recently, um, about two months ago, changed the way I eat and the things that I had in my house. And the result was a 15-pound weight loss, which was really, really tremendous for me. Hooray! And, um, and really what it was about was was being organized about food. And I think that the key thing for me was adapting the food changes to my lifestyle. So I tend to run around. I see two to three clients a day, sometimes with only 15, 20 minutes between them. And in that time, not only am I returning phone calls, but I'm traveling from one end of town to the other while I'm eating some sort of lunch that I've grabbed wherever I was closest to on my lap in a taxi, which was really just not a healthy way to subsist and what it required for me was thinking in advance the night before where I was going to be and having snacks in my bag. Mm -hmm. So not only now do am I prepared and I don't go more than two or three hours without eating, but I have things that I love. So I love having, I cut up an apple, I put cinnamon on it, put it in a Ziploc bag, shake it up. It's my favorite thing in the world. So it's not just having something to eat. It's having something to eat that you enjoy that's healthy. Mm -hmm. And the same thing goes for the pantry at home. You need to have healthy things front and center. They need to be available to you. So if the first thing that you see is a canister of cookies and there aren't any healthy choices to make, chances are if you're hungry, you're going to have the cookie. But if instead you know that you have you know, peanut butter and you have some celery cut up and you could have celery and peanut butter, you could have some cottage cheese and have it with cinnamon and some nuts, then you're excited about what you're eating and it's available to you. This is very good. And this is actually what I tell my patients. And then for, you know, sometimes they're used to eating a certain way and cooking for, like I'll have mothers that will say, okay, so I'll eat like this, but I'm gonna have to cook a separate dinner for my family. And I say, why? 
you know, just find a way to cook this food. It's not going to hurt your family. It's going to benefit them and teach them better food choices. And one of the places I send them is the internet. I mean, the internet has thousands and thousands of recipes online now that you can access. And all you have to do is put in a search engine, gluten-free or, um, you know, kale or <laughs> whatever it is that you want. Cooking with apples and cinnamon, you know, and, and you'll have so many hits on there. And there are certain, I think, um, recipefinder.com. You can go on there and you can say, this is the ingredient I have. This is what I, you know, what I have in my refrigerator. Give me a recipe that actually has those things in it. And I think those are great resources for people to be able to pull up healthy ways of cooking for the entire family. So it's not just you that's making that change. Because don't we want the whole family to actually be as healthy as we are, right? Well, and it's not only that. At the end of the day, what you really, really need are maybe seven or eight recipes. Mm -hmm. You really only need seven or eight dinners. And if you can hit on seven or eight dinners that everybody in your family will eat, maybe with modifications, then you can just keep repeating those things. Or even I have one family that I work with where every Monday night they have chicken for dinner and every Tuesday night they have fish for dinner and every and it's everybody can count on it. It's very predictable. Mm. Yeah, that's a great idea. And I mean, I think eating, kind of keeping it simple is a really healthy way to do it. It's the cream sauces that kill us. So if you actually, you know, save those things for fancy nights, you know, for entertaining or for parties and things like that, and then just think, I need a protein. So pick your protein. I need a vegetable or three. <laughs> pick those. Right. And you're good to go, you know, and you can fill in the rest of it. And to me, my mind works that way and it seems really easy. But I do see kind of the deer caught in the headlights, glazed eyes from people sometimes. And so... I think maybe picking a night of the week like that is a great idea. So fish night is one night, chicken night the next night like that, um, legumes right, and just, Wednesday and, night. And again, the internet is such a great resource for simple recipes, mm -hmm. you know, recipes where you're just grilling something. Right. So you don't need all kinds of fancy ingredients and you don't need to run to the grocery store because you're missing some exotic spice. You just have to have seven or eight things that you can keep rotating that everybody in your family will eat and will enjoy. Mm -hmm. Great idea. I mean, I know I don't, I don't love entertaining, but I do do a beautiful brunch. And the reason why I can do brunch is because I do it the same way every time. I have, this is the platter that I use for this, and this is the casserole dish I use for that, and this is what I put the bagels in. And there's, I don't have to think about it anymore. Mm -hmm. So even... Entertaining for a big group becomes simple when you have it down to that science and you're doing it the same way every time and serving in the same serving pieces every time. Mm -hmm. And I know that if, if you're raising children in that way, they come to really, those become traditions. These are the things that we love about this holiday. Um, I know that I pulled out the the cups, the mugs this year, for the, their snowman mugs, you know, and, and my kids got very excited. We'd put up the Christmas tree and we have these snowman mugs and we do like hot mold cider out of them and sit around the tree after we're done, you know, and just kind of be together as a family and read stories and things. And my daughter said, Mom, when you die, I want these mugs, you know, and it's just like, that's, it's kind of funny because this is the thing that actually signifies childhood to her at Christmas time, right? And my, my other daughter said, well, that's a little bit macabre. I mean, really? We're thinking about mom's death. And I said, no, that's actually really good. It's good to know ahead of time. Yeah, right. It's very natural. What are the things that you really want? Because, um, you know, there are a lot of squabbles over things like that after mom and dad die. So it's great to kind of have those conversations and say, these are the things like this thing really means something to me so um, I was I, I said great let's have that conversation more often you know what is it that and you guys call it like say what it is that means something to you because everybody gets hit differently with things that are sentimental to them or meaningful right well and I would add to that don't just have the conversation but put the conversation in writing because that's the thing that will really prevent the squabbles later on that's true that's true yeah, we, <laughs> I don't know it might be a little early for that but um, but yeah I think that's perfect advice and when I do have patients that have um, cancer or terminal illness I do tell them make sure that all this stuff is laid out because um, I've seen some really terrible when I used to work in hospice terrible arguments over the most menial things because people are stressed at that time 
So that's another great way to organize um, is to make sure that you know exactly as you're leaving too. stay organized. Good idea. Well, Barbara, any one, we have about 30 seconds left. Do you have one last tip for people for the 2012? I think that everybody really just needs to do the best they can and find something that works for you. Sometimes what works for somebody else isn't going to work for you and your family. And do the best you can. Feel good about it. And remember, it's the little steps that matter that get you to the final goal of complete organization. Thank you so much for being here and for helping us get organized for our upcoming year. And have a wonderful time in Mexico. Thank you. <laughs> You've been listening to Healthy You Radio, everybody. This is Keisha Yours. Remember to live, love, laugh, learn, and listen to the Healthy You Radio Network. And have a great day.